So let's take a look at the simple problem, 0 0.8, and we're going to multiply that times 6. So notice that I have a 0 and an 8 and a 6, and I push everything to the right as usual, but I'm going to ignore the decimal point completely until the final answer. I'm going to pretend it's not there. So I start in the right. 8 times 6 is 48. So I write the 8, carry the 4, just like usual. I ignore the decimal. 0 times 6 is 0, and then I add 4, which means I have a 4. Now there's nothing left to multiply. If the decimal point wasn't there, the answer would be 8 times 6, which is 48. But I have a decimal. Where do I put it? What you do is you look at the decimal points you have, and you see how many digits after the decimals you have in your problem. I have one digit after the decimal, and there's an implied invisible decimal point here. We don't really count that after the 6. We really just look at the digits after the decimal. So in my answer, I must have a single digit after my decimal as well. So because I have one digit total in my entire problem uh, after the decimal, then I must have the same in my answer, and so the answer is 4.8. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Let's say we have 0 0.002, 0, uh, not 0, 0, 0, 0 0.02, and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.9. Two things. First of all, notice that the numbers are just put in there, and I line them up and push them to the right. I do not line up the decimal points. When you add and subtract decimals, of course, you have to line the decimal points up. But when we multiply, we do not line any decimal points up. We just pretend they're just basically not there. So let's ignore them till the final answer. We start in the right. 9 times 2 is 18. Carry the 1. 9 times 0 is 0. And then one more is 1. And then 9 times 0 is 0. All right, now we're multiplying by 0. So we have to drop a 0. And then 0 times 0 is 0. And 0 times 0 is 0. And 0 times 0 is 0. It doesn't do much there. Now we have to add these. We have an 8 here and we have a 1 here. You can add these leading zeros if you want. I mean, you could drop it down there. You could put this one down there. That's fine either way you'd like. Now, when we find out where to put the decimal, we have to say there's a decimal here. There's two digits after. There's a decimal here. There's another one. So there's a total of three digits after my decimal. So I must have uh, three digits after my decimal in my answer. And of course, I can drop that leading zero in the front. 0 0.018 is the final answer. Or if you didn't even put that and call it 0 0.018, that's OK too. But notice I have three digits after my decimal in my answer, and I have one, two, three digits total in my problem after the decimal as well. So you place the decimal in the answer based on how many places after the decimal you have in the problem. All right, let's take a look at 0 0.257, and we're going to multiply that by uh, 0 0.3. Notice I line up the numbers. I do not line up the decimal points. So we multiply. 3 times 7, 21. I have to carry the 2. 3 times 5, 15. 16, 17. 7, carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6. One more is 7. 3 times 0 is 0. And then I drop a 0. Now I'm going to multiply by 0. 0 times 7, 0. 0 times 5 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 0 is 0. And then, of course, it doesn't do much. I'm going to add these. A 1, a 7, a 7. And then I can put a 0 here uh, as well. You can put a leading zero in front and then drop it on your answer if you need to. Now, how many uh, decimal uh, digits do I have after the decimal? Three here and one here for a total of four. So I have to have four digits. I have four on the board. I have to have all four of them after my decimal. So the decimal point goes here so that I'll have one, two, three, four digits after my decimal. One, two, three, four after the decimal. And since I have it like this, I can drop put this other leading zero in the front to make it zero point. 0771. I have to have four digits after because I have four digits after in my problem. All right, for our next problem, let's take a look at the following. Let's say we have 8.604 and we'll multiply it by the whole number 28. So again, we pretend that there's no decimal at all and we multiply 8 times 4, 32. So we carry that 3. 8 times 0 is 8, then, uh, then we add 3. I'm sorry, 8 times 0 is 0, of course, 0. Plus 3 means we have a 3 here. 8 times 6, 48, means we carry a 4. 8 times 8, 64, plus 4 uh, is going to be 68. So we're going to have 68832 in that first line. Now we multiply by a 2. So we're going to drop a 0 to do that, and then 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times 6 is 12. We have to carry a 1. And 2 times 8 is 16. One more is 17. Now we add this guy. 
Now we add. We have 2 here, and then 8, 9, 10, 11 means we carry a 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. 8 plus 2 is 10, carry a 1. 7 plus this 7 is 14, and then we have a 2 in the front. So we have 2, 4, 0, 9, 1, 2. Where does the decimal go? In our problem, we have three digits after the decimal, nothing from here. So in our answer, we have to have three digits after the decimal as well to match the total number of decimal positions there. 240.912, that's the final answer. All right, only two more. Let's take a look at 501.2, and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.006. Notice again, the decimal points are not lined up. The numbers are lined up in the columns. So multiply. 6 times 2 is 12. Carry. 6 times 0, I'm sorry, 6 times 1 is 6. One more is 7. 6 times 0 is 0, and 6 times 5 is 30. Right? Now, here's the, here's the little secret with multiplying decimals. So you notice how it's 0 0.006. The next digit we would multiply by would be a 0. But what we we're going to do is drop a 0 and then multiply by 0 so we get zeros everywhere. And then after that, we'd multiply by this 0. So we're going to drop two zeros and then we're going to multiply by 0 and have zeros everywhere. And then we're going to have this 0 multiplied, so we're going to have we have to drop a, yet another 0 and then multiply by all those. So basically, we're going to have a ton of zeros down here. So when you see uh, leading zeros in your number, you don't really have to multiply. You can multiply them, but you don't need to because you know that they're all going to make zeros everywhere. And you're going to add, and so all you're going to get are these same numbers that we have right here. Um, I'll, I'll show you real quick. If we just do the next one, if we multiply this zero, we have to multiply, drop a zero, then zero times zero is zero, and zero times one is zero, and zero times zero is zero, and zero times five is zero. And then this zero, we're going to have like a, this zero here, and then here, and then here, and then here again. Then multiply by this, we have to drop two. So we drop one zero here, then two zeros here. Uh, let me make sure I got this right. Then we had this, we had one, two, three, four. Then we dropped two zeros here, then we had another zero here. Now we have to drop three zeros, and we're going to multiply one, two, three, four digits. So one, then two, then three, then four zero digits. So you see what, what's going on here? None of those zeros do anything. So you're just going to have a two, and you're just going to have a seven. And then a zero is going to be here, and a zero is going to be here, and you're going to have a three. Now let's see where the decimal falls. One, two, three, four digits after the decimal point. So one, two, three, four digits after the decimal point means it must be 3.0072. So in the future, when you have leading zeros like this and you know they're not going to do anything, you don't even have to really multiply them. You can just basically say these are the numbers that are going to be in the answer. All right, here is our very last problem. Let's take a look at 0 0.048, and we're going to multiply that by 4.5. 4.5. Go off to the right. 5 times 8 is 40. Carry the 4. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 4 is 24, so carry the 2. Then 5 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2, and then 5 times 0 is 0. Now we drop a 0 to multiply by 4. 4 times 8, 32. Carry that 3. 4 times 4 is 16, then 17, 18, 19, carry that 1. 4 times 0 is 0, 1 more is 1, and then 4 times 0 is 0, and we need to add these digits together. So what do we have? We have a 0 over here, 4 to, plus 2 is 6, 9, 10, 11, carry the 1, and we have a 2. We have a 2, 1, 6, 0. How many digits after the decimal two do we have? We have 3 and then 4, total of 4 after the decimal. One, two, three, four. So we have to put our decimal here for four after. And then when you have a, a leading, there's an invisible leading zero here, you can just add that. It comes from this, this leading zero here. So you don't have to put the leading zero, but usually we do. 0 0.2160. You can actually drop the trailing zero too, but it's fine to leave it there for completeness. And this is the final answer, 0 0.2160. So here, we have conquered the idea of multiplying decimals. The number one thing you need to know is that you basically do not line up the decimal points. You do that when you add or subtract, but not when you multiply. And then you basically line up the numbers as you usually do and completely ignore the decimal point and multiply as if it isn't even there. Then when you get the answer, all you do is count decimals and drop that decimal point into the correct position to have the same number of decimal uh, numbers after the decimal point. That's all you're gonna do. Practice all of these yourself. Follow me on to part two. We will continue practicing the idea of multiplying decimals. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.